Hey everyone, Scooby-Doo here and welcome to a brand new video. Today we're going to be taking a look at some of the 1-6 scale figures that I got over the last week. Uh, one of which will be the Ant-Man and we'll be talking about the other one in just a moment. Also too, we're going to be taking a visit to the uh, Star Wars wall to take a look at some upcoming changes to the wall and some different concept things uh, that I'm going to be doing. So first with the 1-6 scale Ant-Man from Hot Toys, this is the original movie version. Uh, I believe Hot Toys made like two or three other versions. There's one for Civil War, there's one for Ant-Man and the Wasp, and I believe there's another one. I don't really follow the Avengers line as far as the 1-6 scale figures go. Um, but yeah, so I talked about this guy like two or three weeks ago when I did the review on the Baby Groot. And basically I was talking about how this guy here was kind of expensive so I went with the Baby Groot as part of a um, hidden Easter egg for the Avengers room. Now I'm trying to show you right now that his helmet is lit up but it doesn't really come across very well on video but it is, well, is it? Actually you know what? It's not. I guess the battery's already kind of wore out on this. That's funny. I'm trying to show you and let me see if I can get this to come back on. Yeah, the batteries are just really low, so. Um, but just to talk about really quickly, the top of his helmet comes off, there's a switch. Um, it's one of the things that I'm always griping about with Hot Toys and Sideshow is like, well, darn it, <clears throat> is this thing right here with switches and stuff. Um, when you have figures, you don't really want to be touching them all that often. And why they don't have the, you know, the, Thing where you can kind of touch his home and it comes on why it's the way it is uh, they should fix that now for this particular figure here I got the top back on uh, for this particular figure here uh, I'm not gonna be using the light up fe uh, feature to it so it, I'm not really that concerned about it which is probably the reason why lots of times when I gripe about the light up feature on Darth Vader or something a lot of people just don't care because they're not gonna light them up. That still doesn't change the fact that Hot Toys uh, needs to fix the uh, feature on it. They do. This is just absolutely ridiculous because now that I mess with it, these these little cords that come out, and I'll show, the, I'll show these to you in just a minute, a little bit closer, uh, these pop out of the helmet really easily. And you just, it's just, un, it's just, uh, I just want to mess with all that. So anyways, back to this figure as a whole. Um, I wanted to add him into the Avengers room as part of a hidden Easter egg, but this, this guy really sells for a lot of money on eBay. And um, so I kind of looked at him a few times, it was just too expensive. And last week I saw him come up and I think it's a combination because on here, I don't know if you could see it or not, but there's a little bit of fading in his pants. So this one had some of the fading, which I don't really care about at all. And uh, also too, that the auction was ending at like a really weird time. Uh, I decided to put on it, I, I decided to put in a bid on it and I still thought I was gonna be outbid on it, but I wasn't. I was actually kind of hoping I would cause I, I, I really, you know, the, the baby Groot will work just fine as the hidden Easter egg in the Avengers room, but um, I put in the bid and nobody outbid me, so I got him. He was uh, way under two hundred dollars. I don't want to say this specific amount because then other people might get upset on how cheap I got him. But um, just a great figure, and the, and the reason why I chose this one is I believe the other versions uh, don't have the helmet. How you can just take it off? It's magnetically held. You can kind of take it up where you can see the helmet, but also see the awesome head sculpt that Hot Toys did. I think the other versions is either they give you a helmet sculpt and then they give you a head sculpt and you can f uh, flop them out but or flip them, change them out or whatever I'm thinking of. Um, but I like this look like this and I'm not sure if any of the other versions have this. I know a couple of them don't, uh, but they're making so many new ones that maybe they're going to go back to this type style. But again, the detail and the head sculpt is just absolutely fantastic. Uh, there's that wire I was talking about that connects to his helmet. 
uh, it kind of just sticks into the back and it pops out really easily. But he's going to be posed in a certain position and then we're just going to kind of leave him in the Avengers room. But then I have the ability I can move him around. Um, yeah, I, he's just, he's great. Um, what else can I say about him? As far as his posability goes, he is a little bit restrictive. Uh, not because of the actual body itself. It's just the material. It's this pleather material that I probably shouldn't be touching. Um, That's probably how it got faded in the first place because of the oils and the stuff in your hands. But uh, his knees are bendable. You can bend at the elbow and everything, but it's just restrictive. You just got to figure if you've ever worn a leather jacket or something, it's not the most flexible material, uh, especially for this size. But other than that, I mean, I'll just pull him closer there. His belt. Again, the detail here is just fantastic. Uh, backside. I can see why this figure just has kept its its value. It, it's just it's just classic. It's it's a really classic Hot Toys that will look good in anybody's collection. Uh, other stuff that you get with it, I was gonna kind of put it out on the counter, but I decided just I'll just leave it in here. Um, you get like a little mini Ant Man. You see, I'm just gonna leave him in the plastic. A little tiny guy. I'm not gonna use him. You get a couple of his shrinking disc and his disused to get larger I guess and then they give you a couple of these little geez that's yikes um you get a couple other pieces I think those are the remotes that would go on the ants that he had sorry it's not focusing in very well but uh then you get a whole bunch of different type of hands and stuff so um again this isn't like a great review but this figure came out years ago so I'm sure if you were thinking about getting him you have We've already seen a bunch of reviews on him already. So there he is. So there's the Ant-Man. Uh, look for videos coming up on him when I finally get him into the Avengers room. And we kind of go through that whole thing. And um, so yeah. So that's the first 1-6 scale figure that I picked up. Let's look at him one more time. He Really impressive. Except for the light up feature. Um, yeah, it's really, really nice. All right, so let's move on because this video is going to run a little bit long. The second uh, figure that I got, we'll just pull him into frame. I think we can put him right next to the Ant-Man. Get a little bit of a light glare there. Go off to the side. Move this back. It is the Hot Toys 1-6 scale Return of the Jedi Fett. Now, of course, some of you are like, wait a minute, you already have that figure, and I know you pretty much have every single FET 1-6 scale figure that's out there. That That is true, I do. But this is actually a second one. And just to prove it, we'll go over here and... There's my original one right there. This is a second one, and uh, this one's actually going to be going up onto the Star Wars wall, whereas my other figure is going onto the Tantooine FET wall. Two separate walls. All within the Star Wars room, but uh, two separate walls. And um, again, if you haven't picked him up, which I don't know why, I mean, this guy came out a few years ago. Absolutely fantastic. Now, I own the same version in the Metacom, which is also a really nice figure, which I've talked about before. But it's just not the size that I want. Because I could have easily just used a Metacom for this new display. But I really wanted to go with the best especially when it comes to FET. So I picked him up. Again, I got a really great deal on this guy and a really big thank you out to the eBay seller that sold him to me. I kind of, uh, I kind of explained to him what I was doing uh, and he kind of helped me out, which is really cool about buying stuff on eBay sometimes. Uh, I do try to communicate with the sellers sometime and kind of let them know like, hey, I got a Star Wars room, I got an Avengers room, I got whatever. And um, it's really cool when they can kind of chat back and go, hey, that's great. You have any pictures and different things? And cause that's one thing about collecting. Like we collect for ourselves, but it's great to share with other collectors and we can talk about things. And uh, it's the same reason why we have this uh, channel is so we can do that. And we can share how we display, uh, how much we pay for stuff, where's a good place to get something. And so, um, yeah, there he is. 
again, great, uh, big thank you out to that eBay seller. It was, he was really helpful and he was really behind my cause and I, I really do appreciate it. I know some other people were like, hey, I need a fit, fig uh, fit figure. I'd like a good price on it. You already got a bunch of them, you hog. Well, <laughs> I can't help my designs. I just come up with these things and sometimes I need more than one. Uh, it is a very expensive uh, hobby for sure. All right, so now we're going to go ahead and go into the Star Wars Empire Room, talk about some updates, talk about the Star Wars wall a little bit and what we're going to be doing. And then after that, we're going to come back here one more time and I have one more announcement to make and then we'll wrap up this video because we might be in the other room for a while. So uh, get comfortable, I guess. And I will try to hold the camera as steady as possible. Steady as possible. All right, so let's go into the other room. So... That FET is actually going to be going up onto this shelf right here. And another reason why I wanted to show you the Star Wars uh, wall is because I actually already switched out these two shelves. They were actually flipped. And I wanted the FET helmet to be more at eye level. And so uh, our new FET's going to be displayed on here. I have to do some adjustments to this shelf and I'm going to recontour it and stuff. Um, but I wanted to get him on the shelf because this is part of my conspiracy theory that Fett may have had something to do with Uncle Owen and Aunt Beru, uh, which now we have the main culprit is a uh, sand trooper. And this is part of the, the displays that we have going across. And by the way, if you haven't seen my Star Wars wall before, it's kind of a storyboard of the original trilogy. Plus there's some combination stuff I have in here. And again, Sometimes I have some theory stuff with like the FET. So we're going to have the FET here because we know that he was on Tantooine during that time. We also know that uh, Darth Vader up there, uh, he did mention to uh, FET in Empire Strikes Back, no more disintegration. So what was he talking about? Apparently he had done that before. And uh, it might be a good cause to say that uh, he was somehow involved. Plus, I just want to display the helmet with the figure because I do that multiple times. Obviously, I have it with the uh, Vader uh, helmet there. And then um, I did have it with my uh, Snowspeeder Luke, which is down there, which is the next thing that we're going to talk about. And um, so with this design, and if you remember the last couple of weeks, we had a Darth Vader that was right here. And basically, I, I was just moving him out of the way uh, because he actually is going to be with the uh, cabinet area over there, which right now he's on the floor. Uh, it just made it easier for me to get behind the cabinet and work. So I moved him out of the way. I put him over here. And I always wanted to add the life-size stormtrooper. So when the Darth Vader was here, he was blocking some of this wall. But I figured, like, once I put Darth Vader back, maybe now I can do the life-size stormtrooper so the stormtrooper is going to go right here he will be blocking part of the wall but then again he's supposed to be life size so he's just kind of supposed to be in the room kind of like our fat here because if you see he kind of blocks part of the shelving but it's kind of depending on where you're standing so if you're right here you'll be able to see these other shelves which i also too have to work on and we're going to be doing this over the next three or four months i'm going to start redoing uh the the how-tos on the dioramas and doing the mold of scene and stuff. And we're definitely going to be doing that here because it's, um, our snow speeder Luke is taking over this shelf down here, which used to be occupied by the Spin Master Yoda, which is still right there. I had mentioned in the last video that he's coming um, off the Star Wars wall. The original concept was I was trying to get a life-size uh, Yoda and I actually wanted to have it where he was coming off the wall, like to fight all these bad guys that are in the room. Well, not bad guys, they're just the Empire. But anyways, he was going to be coming off the wall, and I just couldn't find a good life size. I mean, I know Sideshow makes one, but they're two thousand dollars. I'm not going to pay that. And so eventually, because of the stormtrooper going here, and another thing was, is uh, if we pull further back, I always wanted to have five helmets on this wall. Don't ask me why, I just wanted five. And so we have the Darth Vader, we have the Fett, uh, we have the Stormtrooper down there, and then we have the X-Wing, that made four. And so now this is gonna allow me to add the fifth, 
Uh, plus, I also have this other thing here. And again, I'm going to talk about this another time uh, on the wall. And I'm going to try to wrap this up because I'm just talking way too much. But uh, here we have these combos of like, this is X-Wing Luke here. And I do have a TIE fighter pilot there. So they're going to be kind of looking into, they're going to be staring at each other. Uh, I have double combo meanings with uh, the Millennium Falcon. He's kind of centered in the room. I mean, it's, he's he's centered on the wall, but he's used many different times, right? So here he's escaping from Tantooine. Uh, I do have all the moons and planets that are represented in the original trilogy. There's Alderaan as the asteroid field. So that's them escaping Tantooine. This is also them escaping uh, the Death Star by the TIE fighters that they had to fight. But then it's also going to Yevon. So again, I have like multiple meetings and this is like a whole storyboard plus conspiracies and other stuff. So anyways, back to this. We'll explain all that more. I, I need to like do this in sections and it'll be a whole series of videos. Uh, I'm getting tired. Um, so yeah, so what we're going to do here is I'm, I have an AT pilot helmet that's going to be going right here. And then I'm going to be moving my pilot that's here on the ground as part of my Hoth diorama. So he'll be going up with the helmet. And then I think Luke will just look better down here. Um, and then we're going to be redoing that diorama. And so that's like kind of the combinations. And I was going to be moving. I started moving everything around and I decided that I wanted to uh, kind of cover it a little bit to show you what it looked like before if you guys had forgotten. So... These are the kind of changes, uh, modifications we're going to be doing. And then uh, once I'm done working in this corner, uh, we're going to be doing the uh, life-size Stormtrooper. And uh, with the Shepardton armor, and I'll show you how to do the mannequins and stuff. Because I, I do know that when people do mannequins and then they do the armors, they basically look like a mannequin with armor on it. And if you can see by this FET, he looks like fit like I have them built out I have them posed yeah, most mannequins are really skinny and they're not that posable and um, so we're gonna be doing the same thing with the uh, stormtrooper uh, okay so back into the other room for one last thing and then we're gonna wrap this one up because I have a lot of other work to do um, that not so life-size Iron Man bus that I also did a video on about a month ago. That one I went ahead and I cut the base off of it. And he's ready to go up on the wall in the Avengers room, which is, uh, again, it's just it's just coming out awesome. Um, everything's gonna be life size in there, which is, I don't know if I mentioned it because this video is going so long. That's why I can use the Ant-Man because I'm sure at some point he could make himself that size. Um, and I apologize if I had already mentioned that before. I just kind of lost track. But, um, but the final thing, as you know, when I'm always doing my videos, I'm always got in the backdrop, I have my Back to the Future, right? And I did that, and I did this room back uh, prior to October 2015 when the anniversary was going on. And then I think afterwards for a little bit, I actually... Um, added some more stuff to it, but this room has pretty much stayed the same for the last couple of years, I think. I don't know when I did the Hill Valley diorama uh, over there with the train, but it's been a while. But other than that, I really haven't added anything to this room. And so I was looking online the other day to see what kind of stuff that was out there, and uh, I purchased some stuff for that. So we're also going to be doing an upgrade on the Back to Future Room, that's not going to take very long. That's like a one-day project. Uh, but I just wanted to mention that in this video. So when we go back into this room for a quick look, you'll go like, oh, okay, I see where you changed that. And I like what you did there or whatever it is that you guys are going to think. Whew. All right, so that's it. I mean, we went through this whole video. No breaks, no nothing, no notes this time. We just go through. I got, again, um, some other stuff we got going on. I got a really big... 
a surprise to show you guys in about two or three weeks. It has to do with the Avengers room. Uh, we got the Count Dooku. I know is going to be coming out really soon. I know it's already been released. Uh, I think over in China and stuff. And I'm sure I'm going to be getting a notification from Sideshow any day that they're going to be shipping my Count Dooku. So we're going to be upgrading that wall and doing that review. I also pre-ordered uh, the gauntlet from Endgame, the one for the Hulk, because I was still trying to figure out some kind of life-size prop to use in my Avengers room. So that's pre-ordered. I think that's coming out, I think, in the first week of August, I believe. So we got that going on and just all kinds of stuff. So stay tuned. Uh, hopefully I can cover something that you like, and who knows, I might get back in that Jurassic Park room too. I'm trying to cover everything, try to make everybody happy. Uh, again, questions or comments, feel free to leave them down below. If there's something specific that you saw, maybe in the background or something that you want me to talk about, leave it down below. Uh, again, don't forget to like the video. That's how the uh, channel grows, and obviously don't forget to subscribe. Hope everybody's having a great weekend. I'm going to stay inside because I think today is going to be like 106 out, so... Uh, we'll just be doing some work in here and uh, I'll try to get back to you as soon as I can. Hope you guys have a fantastic day.